Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Tiffany Bell. I'm the Serve Teams Director here at FaithBridge. And today with us, we have Adam McIntyre, who just preached the first uh, sermon in the series, Jesus the Prequel. Thank you for being with us today, of course. Adam. So excited to be here. I just have a couple of questions for you from the service. Okay. Um, the first is you, your first um, script you talk about is Samuel, and okay. then kind of jump almost immediately to talking about Jesus. And yeah. that's a long time in mm -hmm. between that. So how much time is that? And kind of give us a description of what goes on in that time. Yeah, so the, the time from when the Israelites demanded a king to the time where Jesus shows up was roughly about a thousand years. And unfortunately during the talk, I wasn't able to get into a lot of the meat right. of what was going on there. But I'll try my best to give a real quick summary okay. of what was going on. And so the first king of Israel was actually a man named Saul. And Saul did okay for a little while. He had a couple of victories, but then he very quickly just began to follow his own will and what he wanted to do. And he was completely ignoring the commands of God. And so, uh, so God quickly kind of boots him out of there and actually anoints, actually has Samuel go and anoint David as a king of Israel while Saul was still technically king. And then it wasn't until David was probably around 30 years old that he became the king of Israel. And he reigned over Israel for about 40 years. And, and like I said in the service, everything went well for a while. Israel became a dominant superpower and they were wealthy and prosperous. But David fell into sin, particularly uh, you can see it happen when he gave into his lust for Bathsheba. And then from there it kind of spiraled and you see David become the antithesis of who he used to be Yet before he was this fearless man who would always go into battle even though he was heavily outnumbered right. and he married honorably and he was always decisive and then after he gave into his lust for Bathsheba and then he ended up murdering Bathsheba's husband Uriah and then ends up taking Bathsheba as his wife then he becomes indecisive and he refuses to leave his tower and he he's afraid to go outside and then he you see him take a census of Israel to make sure that he would never be outnumbered in battle and so he kind of turns into this coward and so you can kind of sin, see what sin did to David. Right. And then that sin kind of ends up unraveling his family. His first son, Absalom, who was supposed to be the king of Israel, ends up leading a coup against David. And David has to retreat and go and hide. And, uh, and eventually David's army ends up killing Absalom, his firstborn son. And it was David's fourth son that he had with Bathsheba, Solomon, who ends up taking his throne. And Again, things went okay for Solomon for a while. He actually was the one that finished building the temple, the first temple, and where the Ark of the Covenant was. And, uh, but then he quickly began to worship other gods. And then from there, everything kind of goes downhill. Um, when the following kings kind of took the throne, Israel actually split into two different nations, Israel and Judah. And then Israel was taken over and conquered by the Assyrians, and Judah ended up uh, they lasted a little bit longer and they had a couple of good kings, um, uh, Hezekiah, Josiah, people like that, but they also turned from God as well and they ended up being ca conquered by the Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar. And with Nebuchadnezzar, he was the one that went into Jerusalem and burned it to the ground. Every single great building, every single house, uh, and he went and he stripped the temple of all of its gold and its copper and its silver and then destroyed it. And so that was kind of one of the low points in Israel's right. history when they watched everything they loved burn to the ground at the hands of their enemies. And that was when they were worse off than when they started. Eventually Persia came in and, and conquered the Babylonians. And Persia was actually not that bad of a nation. They let the Israelites go back to their homeland, even though Persia was in control of them. And they uh, still imposed their laws and taxes and stuff on them. But Persia also practiced freedom of religion. And so that was when the Israelites were allowed to go back and rebuild the temple that the Babylonians had destroyed. But the problem was they were slaves in their own land. They were slaves to Persia. And the temple this time around just wasn't the same. They couldn't feel God's presence in the temple at all. And so that's when they began to long for this new mm. king to come, this conquering king. And it was about 400 years, maybe a little bit over 400 years of nothing on God's part. They didn't hear a word from him before Gabriel came and announced that Jesus, the Messiah, was finally coming. So yeah, there's a real quick right. summary of what was going on. So 
in America, I think people often have an aversion to the word kingdom. And right. as you've just said, kings end up, it seems like things just end up not going so well. Yeah. Um, so why not think of the kingdom of God as a republic instead of a kingdom? Why in this situation is it different? Uh, well, all those other kings, they, those are earthly, those are human kings. And so, of course, eventually their kingdom is going to be toppled. I mean, that's just history. You look right. back in history and uh, there's kind of just this ebb and flow of mighty superpowers rise and then they fall. Even Rome, which was supposed to be the golden age of the earth, eventually is toppled. And um, with Jesus, it's different because he is the one true king. And his, ki his kingdom that he began during his ministry is still to this day, 2,000 plus years later, thriving and right. growing and expanding. And it's just not the same kind of kingdom that we imagine uh, with like that's physical and there's walls and things like that. His kingdom is one that can be seen um, when his followers are establishing justice and pushing back darkness and loving others in a way that is sacrificial, the same way that Jesus loves others. That is when his kingdom can be seen and that's, what, that's when it grows. But Jesus must be our king. That's, right. that's the only way it's gonna work is if Jesus reigns uh, here and now, otherwise, his kingdom will fail. And so Jesus has to be king. And so a republic really wouldn't work right. in that situation. So you also say um, in your talk that the gospel is more than just our salvation. So right. kind of explain that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, mean uh, I talked about how for a lot of people, the gospel is the fact that, they're, that Jesus died for them, their sins are forgiven, and right. then they get to go to heaven. Right. And so while that's true on some level, and that's a crucial part of the story, um, what happens when they think like that is, is they, they're missing what it means to be a Christian, to follow Christ as king. And, and so the story becomes about them. And so that's how they live their life. Right. Uh, they think, oh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm good to go. And then they go about doing whatever it is that they want to do. And when they do that, they have no impact on the kingdom of God. And they're not being obedient to Jesus right. as their king. And that's a problem. Uh, the whole reason he came was to bring God's kingdom here to earth. We are saved in response to that kingdom, in response to that good news. But he gave us a very clear command before he ascended to heaven. He said, you know, go about making disciples of all nations, or in other words, go and continue to build my kingdom everywhere. And if we don't see him as a king, if we only see him as a savior, then we are being disobedient to right. our king. And as Paul says, we walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much, Adam, for joining us today. And thank you guys all for joining us today. And we will see you again next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.